Hello, Trouble here, and welcome to a short video of what has been my personal haul for the past months, binary storage. And today, I am pleased to present two prototypes, a cutting edge concept for variable item sorting, and my variable shulker box sorter and merger. Now let's start with the variable item sorter. There are three types of input handling that I'm currently aware of, variable item filters, shulker box splitting, and entity based filtering. Variable item filters are just like normal filters, except they can change the item that they filter. By default, they start with no items in the first slot. However, as different item types enter the system, each slice will capture one of those items, and therefore accept only items of that type until it gets reassigned. Additionally, it will have a timer, which, when depleted, will reassign the slice by freeing the item from the first slot and then breaking the shulker box afterward. When an item that matches the filter enters a slice, it will temporarily unlock it, allowing the item to pass through, and then additionally refresh the timer. This means that the loader will only get one item type and can adapt to new item types as needed by the input. While this is an effective method for a small number of near-uniform item types, it encounters a few problems when handling more rigorous loads. The system can only run at hopper speed, since each slice requires a very precise signal strength boundary in order to stay tileable. In addition, the system is vulnerable to inputs containing only one of a certain item type. This means that the slice may be assigned, but the timer is never set and thus the slice will not be deallocated. The system combats this by adding spaces in between some of the slices, where items passing through will occasionally force all slices in the group before it to set their timers. Another issue is that items that are normally filtered in slices very far away from the input will also be captured by newly deallocated slices that are closer to the input. This means that a box merger will be needed to ensure that similarly typed items get grouped completely. Finally, variable sorting requires two separate systems for 16 and 64 stackable items, but will not handle unstackable items at all. This means that all inputs to the system must be pre-processed. The design that I'm showing is a slightly modified version of Palapala's machine, which I will link to in the description. Shulker box splitters take a different approach to the input sorting problem. Instead of funneling all the items through a hopper speed choke point, we can dedicate one slice of a variable item filter to one shulker box from the input. It simply takes the first item from the shulker box, waits until no more items of that type pass through that filter, and then deallocates itself and repeats the process. Since each slice is hopper speed, this means you can achieve as many times hopper speed as the number of shulker boxes that you throw in. While this method is very effective for boxes with 64 and unstackable items, it runs into two main issues. For one thing, this method also requires a merger, since multiple boxes can have an overlapping set of item types. This is not a large issue, however, since efficient mergers already exist that are capable of handling this type of output very easily. The most damning issue, however, is that it is very difficult for these systems to handle 16 stackable items. Therefore, most systems will not escape the problem of reprocessing all the box's contents. Furthermore, filtering 16 stackables is typically a bit slower than hopper speed since it takes a bit of time for the filter to determine the stack capacity and then send it to the appropriate location. Even worse, the outputs of these stack capacity filters would be, need to be repackaged into boxes with mixed item loaders and then sent to the splitters, which, in my opinion, kind of defeats the purpose. While experimenting with the two options meant before, I realized that I could instead do something completely different. In the case that I'm the first to discover this idea, I will coin the name Entity-Based Filtering. This concept is based on the fact that hoppers can take only one entity at a time. Therefore, if we send a ton of items, each hopper is guaranteed to have up to a stack of exactly one item type. This phenomenon works with all stack capacities, meaning that unstackable, 16 stackable, and 64 stackable items are all compatible with the system. Therefore, the design needs to only do two things. Lock the hoppers when they're not being used, and put each stack of input items into their own box. The prototype I built, however, goes one step further and filters out the unstackable items. This is because they would occupy a box of their own and could be sorted out at hopper speed anyway. The other items from the box unloader are then sent to a waiting chute, where they have time to stack themselves. After a short period of time, the items are launched into the water stream, where each slice can do their work. The system automatically unlocks its hoppers, but depends on external signals to lock them again. 
First, it handles all items. It simply cannot break unless you fail to supply enough to empty shulker boxes. There are no filter items that you can accidentally throw in, since this system does not have signal strength filters. Second, this system also shares the same speed benefit as shulker splitting. It supports as many times hopper speed as the number of box unloaders. And finally, this system is incredibly simple, and all hoppers can be locked while it is processing items, which stops them from ticking for more items. However, for all those benefits, there is one equally stunning cost, output handling. This system is extremely hungry, and it consumes choker boxes like nothing else I've ever seen. Since each choker box contains up to one stack from the input, this means that the number of output boxes can be theoretically 27 times the number of input boxes. To put that into perspective, dumping an inventory of boxes filled with one item type can turn into more than 972 output boxes. This led me to the other thing I want to show off, which is a variable shulker box merger that I made specifically to handle this issue. There are two main philosophies that mergers are usually designed around, a maximally efficient pair system or a naive brute force method. The pair method takes two boxes, determines which is filled more, and then funnels items from the lesser into the greater. This setup is most optimal for a small number of boxes which have wildly different numbers of items, since determining which direction to send items would be a massive optimization. However, I've only seen setups which requires the boxes to be already paired, which means all the boxes will need to be sent through a slow choke point in order to sort them. Also, comparing the fill level of boxes would not really be useful for the output I'm expecting, since there would be at most one stack anyway. I will link a video to my favorite design in the description for more information. The brute force method is much simpler. It puts boxes into an unloader and then funnels the items into a shulker loader. That's it. My design, however, also sorts the boxes for each slice. It first takes one item from the box, which I will call the key, and sends it to a variable item filter. Next, there are two possibilities. It encounters an unassigned slice, or it gets filtered by a slice already assigned to that key. If it hits an unassigned slice, the variable filter will take the key and the box hopper will be locked once the box arrives. If the key is filtered, the slice will unlock itself until the box arrives and then locks itself again. Afterwards, the box will be unloaded as described before. If there are so many shulker boxes of one item type that this buffer is completely filled, the slice will lock both the key and the box hoppers, which will allow more slices to be allocated to that key. This type of merging is therefore optimal for a huge flux of boxes with a relatively small number of items in it, making the system the perfect companion for the variable item sorter I described earlier. Unlike the other method though, there must be two separate systems for 16 and 64 stackable items due to the item filters requiring a precise number of items. Additionally, this does not work with unstackable items either. However, separating the 16 and 64 stackable boxes is not too difficult, and the unstackable items have already been filtered out and would probably go directly to a dedicated machine anyway. These slices are one wide towel, but I plan on eventually making a 3 wide version so that I can lock all the hoppers, reduce the number of tile entities, and make the timings even sharper. With these two systems together, the majority of the input will be prepared for further processing in the rest of the store system, whenever that will be finished. In the description, I will put a world download, so that you can take a look at everything yourself. Also, be sure to check out the minor credits and links to other videos I use as inspiration for the concepts in this one. If there are any questions or concerns, comment below and I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. As always, thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to be notified when I eventually release more Spinery Storage tech.